Well, uh, I doesn't think uh, that uh, Russia needs to be have any any triggers. That they're, they're the one that's setting the agenda here. Uh, there is no prospect of uh, Ukraine joining NATO anytime soon. Uh, you know, that is not the, 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 uh, the main reason why uh, Russia has massed its forces uh, on Ukraine's border. Uh, and the, the, uh, the Russians can't um, be uh, um, offended by the Ukrainians joining a meeting when they, they are claiming that, that, that the West shouldn't be offended at them putting 150,000 troops around three of uh, Ukraine's borders. Uh, that is so contested at the moment. Russia insists that they are starting to return troops from various parts of that area to their Russian bases. But Western allies insist that that's not happening, that in fact they continue to build up troops and in fact are even building pontoon bridges. Yeah, I mean, you have to judge uh, what the evidence is rather than uh, what self-serving statements uh, uh, claim to be the case. And what the, the Americans in particular, but also the British have done, has been trying to gain a, a, an advantage in the information war that's going on here by actually putting information and, and uh, documents, including satellite photographs, into the public domain that actually uh, call out the Russians and show that uh, uh, they actually are putting in forces, that another 7,000 went in last night, they put in in bridge uh, lane equipment, uh, they put in in field hospitals with blood and plasma. And what they're doing there is, is actually saying, OK, let's just see what's happening on the ground rather than re we rely on Russian statements. And it's also a way actually of signaling to the Russians that actually uh, they, their uh, actions are transparent and indeed probably that, that the, the West has penetrated their security bubble because they're getting high quality intelligence about not just the troop movements, but also the the planned false flag operations and the like. So what they're trying to do is trying to deter the Russians by saying you can't claim all these things uh, after the event and say there were Russian uh, Western provocations. When actual fact, we've known your plans ahead of time and we've called them out to world opinion. But uh, as you point out, there's this kind of information war, this this constant uh, press conferences. I think Sergei Lavrov has given a press conference about three or four times a day uh, this last week. So they are trying to match that constant information battle. Um, is it going to deter Putin, who seems to be set on his own agenda, as you've pointed out? Well. The, the, the consequence of all the world attention on on Russia on Putin uh, is one of the gains that, that gains that, that Russia has made from this. Uh, um, President Obama described Russia as a regional power. Uh, others have, dis have dismissed Russia in the last. 10, 20 years, is having an economy that less than the size of Spain's and actually therefore a minor player on world politics. What the, uh, the, the deployments around Ukraine have done is several things. It's made uh, the, um, Russia now the center of international politics and world attention. People are flocking to uh, Moscow to see him and talk about him. Uh, it's brought force back to the fore of international politics. The currency of international politics of the moment is now uh, those 12,000 tanks that Russia has placed around the borders. That's what Russia has. Russia has tanks, hasn't got high tech, hasn't got uh, other, other industries. It's got tanks and it's got gas and oil. And of course, it's also made gas and oil uh, part of, of, the, of the conversation because 40% of the EU is reliant uh, on Russian gas. And, and you know, that is, is a, a, a vulnerability that, that Putin hopes to exploit. Um, and, and therefore, when, when Lavrov gives all those conferences, it's about look at us, look how important we are now, and look how much we are setting the agenda. Mm. Whether that attention is going to be enough is, uh, remains to be seen, of course. We're hearing of skirmishes again in eastern Ukraine uh, on both sides, in fact, tonight, both sides accusing the other. That remains a vexed issue. How do you see that problem being resolved? The, um, the, the, there's a framework there, the, the Minsk agreements, about actually having the OSCE go in there and monitor the, the demilitarization of that zone, the return of the uh, Ukrainian control of its own borders with Russia. And in return for that, uh, that they will be uh, local uh, elections and more autonomy for those regions. That's the framework of the agreement, but the sequencing of those events, Russia is objecting to, and, uh, and this, this whole uh, wider threat to Ukraine 
it may be about getting leverage over those areas. It may be that, that, that actually Russia is threatening a, a wholesale invasion of the entire country as a pretext for then taking a, a greater action in the Donbass region, where the world will th say, OK, at least he's only done that, whereas had he done that in the first place, the, the, the reaction may have been different. So it partly may be framing for action in the Donbass area. Interesting stuff. Good to talk, David. Thank you so much. Okay, pleasure.